Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Cecilia Owosa. <laughs> I upload straight talking beauty lifestyle style videos. Today is a straight talking video. Make sure you subscribe. Okay, so I'm wearing a house, uh, a dressing gown. This is my mom's dressing gown. It actually says Big Mummy. So you know it's a Nigerian woman's uh, dressing gown. Yes, I don't live at home, but I'm still going to take things. I didn't ask to be born. Why should I be the one that has to now be buying things? So yeah, I take things from my parents' house still. And I couldn't be bothered to get dressed. Well, I need to go and shoot a campaign after this, if I'm honest. I don't feel like getting changed and then getting changed again because what I'm wearing with my campaign, I don't really know yet. So I'm all over the place. Let's get into this video. Okay, so for Black History Month, happy Black History Month, guys. Happy Black History Month. Also want to shout out Black Sugar Movement. Uh, they have an award ceremony and I was nominated. Thank you so much for nominating me. The category uh, for, I think, YouTuber of the year uh, is amazing. I think, I believe uh, Annie Dre is in that as well. We'll come on to Annie Drea in a couple of minutes. I want to talk about Black History Month. Happy Black History Month, guys. Also about the number 10 Downing Street uh, Black History Month event that I believe happened late last week. So number 10 and Boris Kojo, I mean Boris Johnson, <laughs> sent out his invitations. I don't know if it was directly through his office or he just got someone black to do it because, you know, he doesn't really like black people. He called us pickaninnies. He said that we have low uh, IQ and he said that we have watermelon smiles. So he ain't really checked for us like that. But he obviously decided that, you know, let me just appease these brown people then. And he threw a uh, Black History Month of, um, event. It, although, from the pictures, I feel like he wasn't there. Anyway, sure. So he threw a Black History Month celebration, invited quite a lot of like uh, Black British entrepreneurs, uh, I think some influencers were there, M some Black MPs were there. I know a lot of people in terms of, I actually know people directly who were there and <clears throat> who I actually love dearly. That cough sounded so shady, that was an actual genuine, genuine clearing of the throat. But I know some people personally who were there and this isn't, this isn't really any shade to them. I do have questions as to like, why you would want to go and that's an actual open-ended question because some people may approach this whole Downing Street thing and be like it's good for us to be in the door it's good for us to get our voices heard it's good for us to be seen but I just don't think that that is enough it's just not enough of an answer because if you're looking at the the historical damage that they've done even in recent years to black people especially the Tory party oh my gosh like it was bad like it, like even just looking at the 80s and in terms of how uh, Margaret Thatcher treated immigrants especially for the first wave of Nigerian immigrants in terms of like the 1990s the 1980s they really struggled a lot under the Thatcher government and she made life very very difficult for them this is a government that historically has called Nelson Mandela a terrorist um her and Reagan shared very similar politics and Reagan was doing all sorts with Reaganomics and the crackdown on drugs in uh, the US against black people these are people who historically don't like black people I'm not saying that the Labour government have been perfect but the Tories just yeah not a fan the fact that it's a black history month celebration kind of confuses me because i'm actually not sure what they're celebrating and i'm not doing that to be rude i genuinely it just seems really tone deaf the windrush scandal is actually still ongoing but the windrush scandal has kind of like in the last two years become a lot more public that they've been deporting black Br british citizens uh, back to jamaica and also, even if you're looking at how Diane Abbott has been treated, it's so disproportionate, the amount of abuse, race, racist, sexist abuse that she gets online. The government really haven't done much to atone, apologise, or even properly acknowledge. Although this was, um, what's that you with the, with the grey hair? Theresa May. That was her government. But I mean, still, they're all one and the same. I mean, Boris Johnson is definitely way worse a big big criminal um but it's just really tone deaf that the fact that you it looks bad do you know what i mean like the tone of it looks so bad when you're looking as a oh, as, when you're looking at like from the outside looking in and you're looking at all these pictures of them like toasting and laughing and it's like but the way that black people have been treated by this very government 
it, it's just so so negative it's so damaging it's so toxic um so even today i think it was the independent that broke news that uh, voters will have to show their id at ballots before casting their votes and and sorry there's no way you can look at that and not think, think that that's voter suppression people are going to have to show their passports or their driving licenses and it's really people of color that they're it, it's almost like it's people of color that they're trying to move away from these um from these voting centers maybe because they're threatened that Labour really have a chance of winning in terms of the next election. I don't really know what's going to happen with our government because Boris Johnson really should have stepped down before, but we move. I think it would have been a lot more useful had that event been more of a discussion on policy and law making and how things can change um, instead of celebration because really and truly it's just tokenism. You're just there because you're black because 11 months of the year they never invite you, they, they never want to really have any discourse with you, uh, not that we've seen publicly anyway. So it's almost like oh it's only because of Black History Month that we've decided to open our do doors and show that we're not racist and it's almost like you're this heart kind of like representation politics it's the idea of oh simply because like we're there that's enough and it's not enough we actually need action in terms of if anything is going to change it's action rather than representation like this whole thing of diversity and inclusion they are very very separate things and the inclusion part once again is missing here okay so word on the curb um i've never actually seen this show before it's really not my cup of tea i would never watch that for fun even watching it for this video is kind of just like I can't believe we're still asking questions of like what nationality would you date like I'm not being funny I've dated both races like black and white sorry I haven't dated Asians or anyone from that ethnic uh, background but from someone who's dated both J Jake and Jibade they're both mad so um I don't I don't really know why we're still we're still kind of like nitpicking us it's just so immature and it really does beg the question of like black British content and I really I'm not saying there aren't great black British content creators in the UK there are but I'm noticing this really nasty trend of like very simple backward basic comical content at the expense of black people for black people like laughing at our nationalities and who we wouldn't date and if you would date a girl who has natural hair and all of these like i can't believe we're still talk talking about that like it's almost 2020 like every day we stray further and further from god's light like how are we still discussing this why is this even a conversation anyway so on this episode they had i don't watch it all the time in it so if i get some facts wrong just let me know what you guys think as well i would be interested in in your opinions i don't watch it so i don't really know who the uh who the reoccurring guests are or the reoccurring people in the show are um but there was a white girl who's cypriot i don't know if she was cute but i don't know anything about her then there was that guy who can't grow a beard on his cheeks it's just on his neck i don't know why because even as a woman because i have a little bit of testosterone every now and then i'll get one here here but it's just on his neck that the beard grows it's world boss i think that's his name the braids i thought we left that with a marion um i do want to say though it looked like he was wearing an elastic band and that causes a lot of friction like he was he was using an elastic brand to hold his braids together it causes a lot of friction and breakage so maybe you would want to like rethink that and go for like a non-friction hair band maybe watch a couple of like natural hair videos i think that might help um although like his head shape just isn't cornrow friendly so that's also a place that he may want to you know consider but i think there was also there was annie dreyer who was the guest and then there was also there was a white guy don't know his name don't really care so not in a rude way it's just not pertinent to this conversation annie dreyer was on episode one and two of the show and yesterday there was a lot of news on twitter about kind of like a lot of things happening on the show that were just 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 people moving mad especially that world boss guy i want to know his government name I want to know it because almost like Monique and Charlemagne, like the way she calls him by his government name, I I want to know your passport name because world boss. What does? So what I noticed from the videos, episode number two, that was the one where they were talking about what nationality wouldn't you date, and they had to like put things in a little ballot, and Annie was the one who had to be draw pulling out the ballot ballot. Uh, the, the, the little papers that, from it. Do you know, if you don't know, go and watch it. I wouldn't really give them another view, but I mean, if you need to, like, for research purposes, go and watch it, it. One thing about Annie Dre, I've never met her. Seems like a lovely, lovely girl. What she's achieved on YouTube, amazing. She's always, like, from what I can see, I don't really watch her content, I won't lie to you, but from what I can see, I think I've only met her once. She seems absolutely lovely. I don't think I've ever... 
met anyone who has one bad word to say about her um and she's very authentic in her content like she's just her like she doesn't she's not fake which i love um so she was pulling out the ballots and like answering everyone's questions and this girl was trying so hard to be polite not in a rude way she was doing what all of us who have been trained well do she was actually like she was really thinking about the things that she was saying to everyone because there were some answers that could have been taken the wrong way or been construed the wrong way if you didn't articulate them properly and she was really trying in fact at one point she says um oh this could be really problematic what she's trying to say she wasn't being problematic but she knew that she had to be aware of the way she worded things now we come to erin badina that girl's racist she's a big racist a big one a big one they were answering questions of like what kind of personality they were or something at this point i kind of lost focus but she basically handed there was an answer saying angry or anger and she handed it to Annie Dre and says, oh, I think, I think you're angry. I think you get angry. And Annie was just like, what? Like, I'm, I think <laughs> she was so cute. She goes, what? Like, I feel like I'm really chilled. Like, I'm really, I feel like I'm really calm. And I was just like, babe, you probably are. She's just racist. Erin was just adamant. In fact, there was one point that Erin just kind of cut her off on what she was saying. And I was just like, you seem like you're one of those girls who love to date black men, but hate black girls. She she just cut her off and she was like, now you feel, you seem like you could be like, and I was just like, oh, so this is the lane that we're going down. We're going down Bigger Avenue. That's where we're going. We're going back down Bigger Avenue. Like, what's this? Like, if, if that isn't my, a microaggression, in fact, it's even going towards macro now. We're creeping up towards macro because it was so clear that she was basically telling her that she was a sassy, angry black woman. And Annie knew, and I think Annie responded really well under the circumstances. She, I could see it on her face. She was just like, this like she knew exactly what that coded language meant. <laughs> she was like, let's discuss this, let's discuss this. Um, but not in a rude way. And even if she was rude, like whatever, but she handled it really well. And I think it was very difficult for her because in terms of the whole video, to be fair, like that world boss guy was being very hostile towards her. And you could see that she was, get she was getting a little bit uncomfortable. And there was one point actually, at, cause I was making notes. Um, this is my Marvel notebook. I was actually making notes and at 13, four, uh, 13 minutes four seconds he was so rude to her that I literally just said we're all rushing him like literally all of us I don't know I don't know where he goes to school because I can only assume by his IQ that he's probably still in lower lower education we should just find out what sixth form he's going to what college he's going to and just meet him around the corner there the way he spoke to her was so unacceptable like it was just it was almost like don't speak to me don't speak to me don't speak to me and it was like oh a guest that you've invited onto your show that's how you're going to speak to her and of course while Erin was moving mad he, he didn't say nothing but to be honest he doesn't have the bandwidth he doesn't have that bandwidth of the, like to deal with that kind of conversation when it comes to coded language against black women um but it was just very very disappointing to watch the, the whole thing was just a hot mess i can't believe people even find it entertaining but to be honest like annie annie was fun she was really cute she was making cute jokes i really enjoyed watching her but that guy and erin were both moving mad but i mean you know a black man and a white woman moving mad what else is new I think it is really difficult in this age we're in. I think on social media, everyone's trying to move mad because it gets views. And for us, we need the validation of social media to make us feel good about ourselves. In fact, not us. You people. Not me. But it's very easy, including me, to fall into that trap. And I think that's why people just keep on making wilder and wilder content. But what's happening now is we're getting a trend of like nasty or fada stew smelling men, black men, who um, make controversial content or make controversial statement or do controversial fit controversial things and no one really calls them out actually people do call them out it's usually black women but we get ignored and they are praised by everybody else but as soon as a black woman wants to come out and say something that maybe is controversial and maybe it isn't she's vilified for it vilified for it and it's just like it's the the, the clear double standard is there and <sighs> it's tiring it's tiring world boss just needs to I, it's cast oil that he needs to invest in and i i don't know if he maybe wants to consider doing a level one or two because he looks about 16 but i'm glad that like she, Anna, annie got a lot of support online uh, i think she's also blocked him because he was being incredibly um offensive behind uh, behind the scenes i've heard or i've seen on twitter but let me know what you guys' thoughts are the whole thing is mad 
absolutely mad and it's so important that we go go to spaces where we're seen and we're appreciated and it's hard when we go to spaces where we're treated like crap um but yeah let me know what you guys think of the whole number 10 down the street thing and uh world boss see you again soon guys bye